Hi crafters, this is Raquel with Paints and Glitter. Today I'm coming along to introduce you to the Enchanted Fairy Village die collection. This is an 85 piece die set from Tonic Studios. It is my new favorite. I absolutely love it. It makes boxes, it makes cards, it makes just gorgeous floral theme, fairy theme, whimsical boxes that you can give away, create for your friends or your loved ones. And one of them is the Maisie Mushroom Fairy House. So I will be creating this house with you today. Please follow along and I'm going to first show you the dies here. So with the 85 dies, you're going to have foundation pieces that look like this. These are little decagons. And then there are side pieces. There are roof pieces that will allow you to create the lids. And that's these here. There are these little side panels. There's a hinge. There's this panel here that's triangular. This is the only one that you'll need for the roof of the mushroom house, the little Maisie mushroom house. And I think it's so cute because my cat's name is Maisie. So <laughs> this panel here will be for the side of your mushroom house. So these two together create your box together with these panels here. So I'll be showing you how to work with that. Then for the Tatiana Tulip Fairy House, what you'll end up using are these panels over here for the sides of your box. Either one of these to decorate it, but only this teardrop shape for the lid. And then if you want to supplement it on top, you can also use this one here and then you have two choices there of how to decorate that. For the Tatiana Tulip Fairy House, you can also add steps if you'd like to. And then what's unique about these little steps is that, first of all, there's two of them. There's the larger one and a smaller one. You can use the inlay piece if you'd like to, to create little stones for it. Then also they shape to the side of the box. So that way it doesn't have a gap between that one element and the actual box, which is really neat. And then on the other side, this is the foundation for the tulip box. And then there are also little pieces here. This is a little chimney piece right up here. This is also for adding a little window. So this one couples together with this window. I'm sorry, that's not a window, that's a door. With this window here, <laughs> it these two couple together to create a little window for your mushroom. There are house. also doors here that you can create. So it's up to you which door you use, how many little elements of windows and curtains and all of that you might add to it. So that's all for you to have some fun. There's this little panel here. This creates a little stone wall. Then over here, you also have some circular windows that you can use to decorate your little house. Have some fun with that as well. I've used this one here, and then I've used the little heart one on my little Tatiana uh, Tulip Fairy House. Then these little, this die here creates the little uh, pieces that you can put on the front of your door. So is this one here. It's meant to represent like the, the metal workings of a door. Um, also, you have a whole entire garden here. So there are butterflies, there are stems, there are all sorts of little flowers, there's roses. There's a little wooden sign that says fairies welcome. That's super cute. And there's a little mushroom here set or little toadstools. Um, and those are layered so you can have fun with uh, creating dimension or just adding different colors, more little leaves. This little step uh, here with this strip creates the little step for the front of the mushroom house. So right in front of the door. Then there are also little stones that you can use and also three different types of vines that you can add to the exterior. So that's the rundown on the dies. I am going to go ahead and share with you how you can create your mushroom house. To start the assembly, we are going to use one piece of card cut out of the medium size Decagon die. This is going to be your box base. I've gone ahead and cut it out of craft cardstock. Then you're going to cut 10 side pieces that look like this. So this little side panel is just the rectangular one with the three tabs on it. You are going to want to fold and burnish the side 
and bottom tabs on this. I've used smooth ivory card for this side panel because I want this to be nice and sturdy. You can then go ahead and decorate it with the additional panels. One of them is a solid, so I've cut that out of this pearlescent card. It's also an ivory pearl card, and then I've also used the two dies together to cut out this tan card stock. And then I did take an alcohol marker and just color around the edges and also for three little portions here. And you can layer these on all 10 of your side panels. Very simple. And of course, it's up to you how you do this. Okay. But it's as simple as that. Now to begin, you're going to take your base piece and you're going to adhere all of your side panels to this, okay? So I am going to take my adhesive here and I'm simply going to lay this right on top, just like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply some pressure with my paper creaser. Okay, and it's initially going to look like one big flower because you're going to repeat this nine more times. So I'm going to do that off camera and then we'll come right back. Your piece should now be looking like this. So you can go ahead and apply adhesive to the long tabs on the side and then bring the adjacent panel right up. Make sure you that that you fold back the little tab on the top because you're going to first adhere all of these panels together so make sure that you apply pressure so that this joins right at the bottom and then walk it all the way up if you have used craft perfect cardstock instead of the 300 gsm card this of course is not going to be as sturdy but Bear in mind that you can cut the same layer panel that you use for the outside, the solid one, and then you can adhere it on the inside to give yourself a nice sturdy finish or just to decorate the inside if that's something that you would like to do. It would be a pleasant surprise for the recipient, especially if you're going for a particular color scheme. So we are going to do this all the way around. making sure again that we line up that line so you'll know that you're doing it correctly if you don't have an overlap here on the top portion and it, you should be able to follow the score line of the adjacent panel so i'll come right back when these are all adhered okay i'm just coming back to check in on you and see if you're following along with this tutorial how you're doing hopefully you've reached this point and if you're wondering if not all of your little panels are exactly the same or perhaps you're just new to paper crafting then i would suggest to you that you always take advantage of the tools that are available that do, do make this a little bit easier for instance if you want to you can always use a little peg or a clothespin to hold your papers together if that's something that you have available to you don't forget of course that you can use your paper creaser so uh, the paper is going to have a tendency for instance to pull away from you but as soon as you're able to make a little bit of a bond with that adhesive then go ahead and apply pressure with the paper creaser and just hold down the paper so you're essentially just you know pushing on it but not burnishing as you would uh, by moving the tool back and forth just holding on to it so it's like another set of hands or fingers so you can apply pressure and then once you have all of that done and hopefully you're here then you can definitely go ahead and take a second piece of that base if you want a nice finished bottom to this box which I highly recommend. And I'm going to use a larger bottle here of adhesive. 
because the nozzle is a little bit bigger than the precision nozzle. So when I want to apply more adhesive, this is what I do. This would be the time where you would want to stamp your personal information on the bottom of your make if that's something that you like to do. And of course, if you want, were wanting to send a message to someone using this type of gift, you can of course do that too. Just stamp a little sentiment on there. Okay. And you can do it on the inside panel. Why not? For a nice little surprise. So now I'm using the tool again that I just mentioned, this paper creaser. And I'm applying plenty of pressure here on the bottom to make sure that that panel adheres fully. You don't want to shy away from applying pressure when you need to. And that shouldn't move, it shouldn't budge, it should not buckle. But just make sure that you give it plenty of time to dry before you maybe fill it with goodies or that sort of thing. Okay, so I'm satisfied with that. Now I have a nice sturdy uh, box bottom there. Okay, then the next thing that you're going to do is the little tabs that were on the top. What I like to do is just kind of pull them all back because you do want to adhere them if you haven't already done so. But I like to pull them all back. Look, I'm kind of using my fingernail there. And then I'm going to leave a little drop of adhesive on every single one. At this point, it should just be super simple. Don't forget to clean your hands if you get any drop of glue when you're working with white or ivory card so that it doesn't oxidize on your hand and then accidentally damage your project. I always keep a damp, damp paper towel or baby wipe with me, by the way, to make sure that I don't accidentally ruin my projects. Because when you get adhesive on your hands, it's always going to oxidize. That's just the nature of it. And that completes the base construction. Now let's move on to the lid. And for this, you would have cut 10 pieces that look like this. They all have the little tabs on the side and you're going to wanna to make sure that you fold and burnish the little folds here. So there's the fold at the bottom and then the little semicircular tabs along with the rectangular tabs. And then there's the tab at the top, quite pointy there. So make sure you burnish all of those. I already got myself started. And then you're going to take your paper creaser and you're going to just run it along the smooth side, just very lightly, just like that. And that's going to help create the curve. So, of course, you can do that first if you want to, or do it after you crease all of those fold lines. But I just take it like that. And if you don't have one, you can use the back of a pair of scissors. Then you're going to use your smallest little decagon. You're going to flip it pretty side down, and you're going to match up all of those little points to the edge of that little decagon. So I like to actually apply adhesive at the base and then kind of butt that up to the edge and overlap, then apply pressure. That's just personal preference. I like to get myself started that way and then I flip it over, I look, look at it, make sure that I've placed it correctly. Okay, we're gonna repeat that all the way around and then come back. You now should have a little piece that looks like this, like a pretty little flower. And I suggest that you do double up your little decagon in the center just to make this a nice 
sturdy lid because remember that this is going to be handled and just go ahead and uh, meet up your little edges there match it up is the word that i was looking for match it up apply your pressure and this is going to help you because when you started hearing your little side tabs they won't have a tendency to pull away if they have a really nice foundation there in the center okay and of course you can do that in a different color i just really like that craft perfect paper <laughs> it's hard for me to say i like that craft perfect paper from tonic studios because it really does have a nice sturdiness to it and a good really good weight now here you're going to notice that some of your tabs are semi-circular some of them are rectangular don't fuss about the rectangular ones just go ahead and focus on the semi-circular tabs here apply your adhesive and if you want to you can apply it on all of them and here's where you're going to want to maintain the curve of this shape and it's naturally going to match the adjacent one what i like to do is hold the little tabs underneath with my fingers there and then just kind of walk it down from the top and as I do this, what I'm doing is I'm grabbing each little tab, just like that, just kind of pinching it, and then making sure that my little seams, if you will, are walking along the side of that paper exactly as I want to, or as I want it. And then at the bottom, I'm making sure that they meet right there I don't want this to be wonky. I don't want one panel being wider than the other. This is where I'm really going to take my time because this is essentially going to be the highlight of this project. Now, if you feel comfortable with it, you can definitely apply your decorative pieces as you go. That's up to you. You can wait until the end or you can apply them before you even assemble all of this. That's really personal preference. I think I'm actually going to do one by one because I want to maintain the shape of my little rooftop here, but I also want to be efficient. <laughs> so that's just personal preference. And again, I've done this in the holographic card and then that beautiful lavender cardstock. And if you're curious as to the darker purple that I used for the border there, that was number 437 Spring Lilac in the Nouveau Alcohol Markers. It has a chisel tip and a marker nib, and that chisel tip is perfect for the edges of your cardstock. So you can imagine how many different colors you can do just in this one project because you can do 10 different panels and you can if you'd like to do 10 different colors who's to say you shouldn't it could be a lot of fun so go ahead and continue if you're doing it like this i mean this is just um not exactly the standard way <laughs> but what i'm doing here is i'm holding on to this paper as it dries Okay, I did want to show you that um, if you're going to use double-sided adhesive, it might help a little bit, but this top portion here is going to be um, something that will tend to pull away because of the curve that you're adding to the paper. So if you hold it down as it, it's drying, it's going to help because then it'll have that curve in the paper it's not going to crack or anything like that and then it's going to give you the opportunity to really adhere and create a bond with that paper and that's how it's already looking and i'm super excited about this because i love the colors i just love the design i love everything about this um so i'm going to continue on i'm going to keep applying adhesive to my little tabs I'm going to keep joining the adjacent panel by pinching those together from the top to the bottom. This is where you can maybe 
listen to some music as you craft, put on a good podcast, just have a relaxing time because this is going to result in a really beautiful creation made by hand, very personalized in the style that you prefer. There's no wrong way to do it. There's no wrong color. You just do what makes you happy. And then if you end up giving it to someone, they're going to be thrilled that you made it yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and just adhere all of these little panels together and I'll be right back. Okay, hopefully you've gotten this far. I did go ahead and adhere the decorative panels one by one as I was adhering the adjacent panels together. I just found that to be easier for me because I needed to hold the panels onto the base to allow them to dry as they were curving. So I just kept holding them just as you're seeing me hold them right now in that fashion. And in order to maintain that dome, you really can't walk away from it unless you're using double-sided adhesive and it's really strong. But even so, it may lift. So bear that in mind, you may want to decorate the panels before you go ahead and adhere them together. So that's just my two cents there. Now you're going to take your little Decagon pieces that you've cut out. I'm going to use the heavier one first and I'm just gonna feed it inside here. And this is the one that I cut out of 300 GSM. And what I'm going to be mindful of now is that I wanna make sure that all of those little pointy edges there meet precisely with the tabs here on the edge of the box here. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. Then I'm going to apply adhesive on every single one of these tabs. So you just make sure that it's nice and centered and all that good stuff. Then apply your adhesive and start wherever you're comfortable. And then hold on to that position it where you need it make sure it's meeting that edge and then you're going to repeat that all the way around Once you've reached this stage, you're going to double this up. And what I'm going to do is apply adhesive onto this piece and cover this up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gone ahead and adhered that top layer. Now this is nice and sturdy. It's going to fit the bottom of my box. Just have to kind of direct it in here because that paper that I use is quite sturdy but that's precisely why I used it because now as you can tell I have a really nice sturdy finish to this and the colors are matching perfectly because they're all neutrals and I've got that really pretty pop of color on top with that holographic and lavender color there. So the next piece that you're going to be able to add to this is going to be on the top here. You can create a little window for this, so let's go ahead and do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to avail myself of this little solid piece. I did fold the little tab at the bottom as a mountain fold. And to prepare it, what I'm going to do is I'm taking this piece here, cut it out twice so that I could decorate this. And I'm going to go ahead and do that first because that paper is going to also need quite a strong curve on it in order to fit on our little roof. So 
you of course decorate it as you like you don't have to cut it out twice I, that was just a choice that I made and on top of this little solid layer is where I'm going to be placing my decorative window and I did place that pearlescent vellum right behind it and all I did was cut it using the solid die and then I just cut away the little tab portion because it wasn't necessary here's what I'm going to recommend you do place the tabs on top okay so I did take this off just to show that you can actually place the adhesive here on this edge just if it makes it easier for anyone and then place your tab right on top meeting that little corner okay and then you're going to walk this around that edge applying pressure as you go to every single one of those little tabs you may need to pinch it to make sure that it's secure and then keep applying the adhesive as you keep walking that paper around that base enough adhesive there to kind of anchor half of that one but i'm going to shift i'm going to make sure that i do apply the adhesive right onto the tabs it's very tempting to always place the adhesive on the base but it's okay now this is going to want to pull so you want to make sure that that's fully adhered before you move on to the other side okay I've got my curve and as soon as that makes contact and I see that my paper is not pulling away it's not wanting to come, fall apart on me okay got that little horseshoe shape just like that now I can place my second piece right on top to complete my little window okay and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut away this tab on the top because we're not going to need it for the assembly and it's just going to create bulk so I'm going to adhere this layer and just add a little drop there in the center because of the vellum I don't want that showing okay this is going, going to cover all those little tabs bring it right to the edge there as well once that is fully adhered you now have this piece <laughs> okay and this is going to now adhere to your lid and you're going to choose which panel i always say try to pick the one that didn't quite adhere perfectly or anything like that to cover up and of course now you're going to be placing adhesive on this bottom tab this top semicircle and then all of the other ones and those are going to be what anchors this onto the side of your lid okay i think that the best course of action is to match it up with the very top there match it up right at the top and then that way you have the perfect angle and just let it fall where it may on that panel okay but just maybe you want to avoid adding it right on top of a seam for instance just for it to look really pretty okay so i'm going to be quite generous here with the adhesive edge there and then i'm going to apply pressure because there's no way that i can really confirm that every single tab is making contact but i'm going to do my best to hold on to this and let it dry and then we will continue with our assembly now that this is securely fastened right on to that little roof <laughs> i think it's so cute you can go ahead and take this other piece and it looks like a little hill but it has little tabs on the top and then a little tab on the side so let me set this aside for a moment so you can see it clearly paper creaser and i'm just going to use the edge of it and i'm simply going to curl that bottom and i'm going to just do that gently okay and then i'm going to just loop this around and adhere it 
right to that tab. Go ahead and apply adhesive to that little tab and then kind of use your fingers if you'd like to to loop this around here just like that okay and you now have these two little tabs these two little tabs are what are going to join this onto the top of your little roof this is going to create a little chimney and the curve is actually to guide you as to how you can curb this to the side of your box okay so again you're going to pick a place where you think this is going to look the cutest i think a little bit further down the side would be really sweet so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to apply adhesive to my tabs again and I'm going to make sure that this is fully enclosed. Okay, so as I hold this to dry, I'm also now going to position this on that sloped rooftop and allow that to make full contact so that it dries right on that slope. I went ahead and cut out three pieces of tulle and they're a little bit hard to see here, but they're just stacked one on top of another. One of this, one of the pieces is in the color gold and the other two are actually in lavender. Not that it matters <laughs> because I'm probably the only one who can even see the color, but I'm stacking them like a little sandwich, each piece right on top of the other. And that is what I'm going to use to decorate the little chimney as if it were a little plume of smoke. If you want to, you can use a little cotton ball. You can use ribbons. You can do whatever you like, really. It's all up to you. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pinch them right in the center, like that. And then I'm going to twist. until I'm happy with how it looks. And I'm going to get something that looks like a little flower almost, or a little bouquet. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to apply some adhesive here, and I'm actually going to use some hot glue. I'm going glue. to use my little kind of pokey tool here to help me out because I don't have my tweezers on hand, and that's what I really should have grabbed. But I'm just gonna use that to kind of help me push that in. Just really quickly like that and my little plume is ready I'm going to actually add a little bit more hot glue to this because I feel like it's coming off so I am going to supplement that I'm going to pull away any little cobwebs that might form, but I'm going to just go ahead and place that right back where it was just to make sure that it's fully adhered. And now my little chimney has a plume of smoke that is just so cute. And that's it. <laughs> I think it's adorable. Okay, moving along, we now have some windows that we can add to our little house. I'll show you how to make the little window. Okay, and for that, you can cut out using the dies a little solid piece. You can cut out the same piece again and then use the decorative die to cut out the center. I did place a piece of vellum behind it. And if you want to use the shutters, there are two. And they have this cute little heart motif that cuts out of the center. So on the little tabs that are on those shutters you can apply just the tiniest little string there or drop of adhesive and then aim the little tab toward the bottom of your little window shape here so let me show you what that looks like okay so you've got one side you're going to repeat that on the other side And of course, this is just one way that you can decorate this. You do it whichever way you're comfortable or, you know, whatever you like. 
because of course you can fold the tab in. I just decided to do it this way to apply the decorative portion right on top. And again, that's going to give the appearance of light coming through. So this one's going to go right on top, just like that. Super easy. I did decorate mine with a jelly roll pen just to highlight the grooves of what that looks like, which is, you know, a little wood uh, texture there. Once you've folded your little hinge in half and burnished it, then you can apply this to your little door frame here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just place a little bead of adhesive here and place this right on top. Now you determine, of course, whether you want this to be opened, closed, all that good stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm first going to add these decorative elements. So I added a little drop of adhesive there for my little handle. I'm also going to add that little decorative portion here. So I'm going to add it right, right about here. Cause there's that little heart and I don't want to cover that up. Okay. So right toward the edge of the paper, just like that. So I'm going to fold that hinge over onto this lavender piece of okay, card. So now I'm going to fold over that tab. Just make sure that the bottom and the outer edges are meeting perfectly. And okay, I just had a little bit of uh, hot glue cobweb there on my fingernails. So just fold that over, hold on to it, make sure it makes contact. And once that's adhered, okay, so now you see that little door is kind of going to open and close. And Tonic Studios will have small magnets for you. It needs to be small enough that it fits in this little area here, okay? I am going to cover that up with double-sided adhesive because if not, it might lift. Okay, so I'm just going to do that. Remove the backing. And now I can adhere this onto my little lavender portion. I'm going to be a little bit more generous with the adhesive down here. Just make sure that it makes full contact. Okay. It's just fun to add some interactive portions to your makes. Okay, so this is going to go right on top of that lavender piece portion now. I'm going to fold this over and apply my second magnet, just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Apply some double-sided tape, making sure that I don't move that from where it is. So I have to determine where I want this. But before I apply that, I want to make the little front step because the height of this is gonna determine where I place my door. So let's assemble that first. And here, what you're going to do is, there's really no wrong way of doing this, but you're going to pick what's going to be the bottom and the top. It's up to you. Then apply adhesive on one of the tabs, which you should fold ahead of time as a mountain fold. Apply the solid portion to one side. And then onto the other tab, apply the top of your little step. Just run a little bead of adhesive there and place that one right on top. Now there's a little tab here at the end. You can fold that down and that's going to join right at the the other side of this. So now that we have our little, uh, it always looks like teeth to me. I can't get away from that, but <laughs> we have a, what looks like a little mouth. 
and I'm very easily amused. So yes, I do laugh at these things, okay? Apply your adhesive there. Fold that little lid right on top. Make sure that those little teeth are inside of the mouth. That's what I'm going to call it. It's technically, you know, a little curve. And those will adhere right onto that edge there. So of course you have to coax the paper. You have to train it as to where it should go. Much like a child. Just put pressure on here onto those little tabs. Make sure they're making contact and walk your way around. Just be gentle with the paper. It'll get there in the end. And you'll be closing this off. Just fold that paper right over and it should match. Just like that. So hold this until it's dry and then we're going to add this to the front of our little house. Once this is dry, I wanted to mention there is a die in the set that will allow you to, to cut out little cobblestones. So if you want to cut those out and place them here or even on the sides of your little house, then you can by all means do that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply some adhesive and I'm just going to go ahead and apply a tiny little bit of hot glue. To this step, I'm going to allow it to just rest on my table here and then just press it toward the very edge here of my little box and I'm going to show you in a moment. Okay, so that, that way they're both at the same distance from the table. It's not lifted and this is what that looks like. And now is when I'm going to apply the adhesive to my door which is going to rest right on top of that. Push this right up against that panel. And I'm going to make sure that it's centered as best as I can. Of course, I can still open and close it. And I did apply a strip of satin purple card there. And that's mirror card from Tonic Studios. There's a die in your set that will allow you to cut out little strips. Of course, I had to cut mine down to the size of the bottom there, but I just figured that could be the threshold. <laughs> and I thought that would be really cute. So now that will close. And what I'll do next is apply the little windows oh, to the side. Fun. I'm just gonna try to make it at the same height as the other one. Right about there. Okay, so here are the results on how I decided to go ahead and finish this gorgeous little mushroom house. As you can see, I decorated the little roof there by adding a little butterfly. I went ahead and added flowers around the window and then on the bottom here, so I'm going to take the lid off so it doesn't fall. You could, oopsie, I have a little gnome in there. <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, I added little flowers in the little garden scene that I created with the little mushroom there. I did snip the mushrooms and replace them just by uh, placing them a little bit closer together with a smaller one on top. So that is certainly something that you can do. I layered the flowers and then I just placed them here and there and just repeated the same thing on the other side. So that is the result of that. And I'm going to be sharing with you a different tutorial so that you can also learn how to use this die set to create the tulip house. So there's your sneak peek on that. So please come back to watch that tutorial. I'll link it below. And then I also made this gorgeous card. So I wanted to share with you, you can definitely use your dies for any 3D projects in your card making. So here all I did was to repeat the little petals and I did use the ones with the little hearts three times. And then I cut into the background of my panel, that matting layer, cut into it and then used the one with the little swirls. 
that I then cut again in this gorgeous yellow pearlescent card from Tonic Studios. And then I laid that pearlescent yellow paper on top of the matting layer and that allowed me to create of course a shaker and I did fill it up with little pink sequins and then added the birthday sentiment with another little set of leaves and little flower that I topped off with one little sequin and some Nuvo drops. So hopefully this video has served as inspiration for you. Let me know in the comments below what you think. I do look forward to sharing the other little house with you as well. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell for new videos. And as I always say, I hope that you can be inspired and be blessed. And I thank you so much for watching.